Today we'll learn how to multiply and divide fractions. The best way to think about multiplying fractions is to take the fraction of a fraction. Imagine that you work at a diner that serves apple pie. At the beginning of the day you have one whole pie. Someone comes in and orders one third of it and eats one third of it. So we're left with two out of the three individual pieces that the whole pie was cut up into. So we're left with two thirds of a pie. If another customer comes in and orders half of what is left over, we have two thirds, so half of that would be one third. What we just did was two thirds times one half equals one third. When asked how to multiply fractions, most high school students will respond cross multiplication. Cross multiplication has everything to do with proportions and nothing to do with multiplying fractions. In order to multiply fractions, we're going to multiply straight across. So we begin by multiplying the numerator straight across. This is now our new numerator. So 8 times 6 gives me 48. Multiply the denominator straight across. This is your new denominator. 9 times 12 gives me 108. And last, as it is with every fraction problem, simplify. So 48 over 108, I'm going to find the factors of the smaller. I'll use the single mountain method. Always start with 1 and the number, so 1 times 48 makes 48. 48 divided by 2 gives me 24. It's a whole number, so I write them both down. 48 divided by 3 gives me 16. Gives me a whole number, so I write them both down. Divide by 4 gives me 12. Divide by 5, nothing. Divide by 6 gives me 8. Divide by 7, nothing. Divide by 8, I'm on the other side. So now I just need to check which of these factors is the biggest factor that will divide evenly out of 108. I start with my biggest factor, 48, and divide until I get a whole number. So 108 divided by 48 gives me a decimal. Divide by 24 gives me a decimal. Divide by 16 gives me a decimal. Divide by 12 gives me a whole number. The greatest common factor here is 12. I'm going to divide top by 12, bottom by 12. My simplified final answer is 4 ninths. Let's try one together. I'm going to multiply my numerators together. 6 times 2 gives me 12. I'm going to multiply my denominators. 5 times 8 gives me 40. Now I need to simplify. I'm going to do double mountain, so I'm going to start with my 12 factors. 1 times 12. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. There's all my factors. 40 times 1 gives me 40. I'm going to climb the mountain. 1, 2, 3 in order. 40 divided by 2 gives me 20. 40 divided by 3 doesn't work, but 40 divided by 4 gives me 10. 40 divided by 5 gives me 8. 6 gives me a decimal. 7 gives me a decimal. 8 works, but it's on the other side. Look at the two lists of values. 4 is the biggest value in both lists. Divide top and bottom by 4. You should get 3 tenths. On your own, try 2 fifths times 6 thirds. Since multiplication and division are inverse operations, they work very similarly when we deal with fractions. So in order to turn multiplication, something we know how to do, into division, something we don't know how to do, we just need to invert it. We're going to multiply by the reciprocal instead of divide by a value. The easiest way to remember that is keep it, change it, flip it, multiply it. That four steps often overlooked. So keep it. I'm going to keep the lead fraction the same. So in this case, two-thirds divided by three-eighths. Two-thirds stays exactly the same. Change it. I'm going to change from division to multiplication. That operation in the middle went from division to multiplication. Now I have two-thirds times three-eighths. The last step before I can evaluate, flip it. Flip the second fraction into its reciprocal. That's basically the inverse of eight-thirds. We're going to flip it. Three and eight are going to switch positions. So we went from three-eighths to eight-thirds. Now I'm going to multiply it. Two-thirds times eight-thirds. I'm going to treat it exactly like any other multiplication problem. So in this case, two times eight gives me 16. Three times three gives me nine. And I would get 16 ninths. And I could simplify that down to a mixed number. Let's try a couple problems together now. 4 sevenths divided by 2 thirds. We already have that written in its multiplication form. 4 sevenths, I keep it, keep it the same. I went from division to multiplication, so I changed it from division to multiplication. I flipped it. I took the reciprocal, the inverse of 2 thirds. 2 thirds became 3 halves. Now I'm going to multiply it. Now that I have 4 sevenths times the reciprocal of 2 thirds, so it's 3 halves, I can multiply it like any other multiplication problem. 4 times 3 gives me 12. 
7 times 2 gives me 14. Now I can just simplify. So I'm going to find the factors of 12. 1 times 12 is 12. 2 times 6 is 12. 3 times 4 is 12. Then I'm going to take all of those factors, starting with the largest, and divide them out of 14 to see when I get an even value. So not a decimal, but a whole value. 12 or 14 divided by 12 doesn't work. Divide by 6, 4, 3 doesn't work. The closest one is divide by 2. So I'm going to simplify by dividing 2 by both my numerator and my denominator. My fraction is 6 sevenths. That's my final answer. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to take two-thirds and keep it. We're going to take division and change it to multiplication. We're going to take five-eighths and flip it to eight-fifths. Now we're going to multiply it. Two times eight gives me 16. Three times five gives me 15. 16 and 15 do not share any common factors. However, it's an improper fraction, so we need to turn it into a mixed number. You can do that by using the long division format that we've used before, or here's another little shortcut. Use your calculator. Take 16 divided by 15. Whatever that whole number is in front of the decimal, so in this case 1, that's the whole number in your mixed number. I'm going to take whatever I got from my whole number and multiply it from my denominator or by my de denominator and subtract that from my numerator. This is actually just breaking down the process that we're following in uh, long division. So 16 times my whole number 1 times my denominator 15. That's going to give me 16 minus 15. That's going to give me 1. That's my new numerator. The denominator always is the same. So I have 1, which is my whole number I got in my calculator. And I got 1 again when I multiplied my whole number times my denominator and subtracted it from my numerator. Denominator in the mixed number remains exactly the same. On your own, try that last problem. Now, although they generally don't change the way we do these problems, there are a couple different variations on the problems that you may want to see. Fractions in general can get very overwhelming, especially when you start throwing negatives, whole numbers, and mixed numbers into it. With negatives, when it comes to multiplication and division, we're just going to use the same rules we've always used with multiplication and division of negative values. In this case, though, we may want to move where the negative is located. So we have 6 eighths divided by negative 3 ninths. I always want to put the negative in the numerator. It makes the, or the calculations later a lot easier. So I'm going to put the negative in the numerator. Now it's 6 eighths divided by negative 3 ninths. I'm going to keep it, change it, flip it. 6 eighths stays the same. Division changes to multiplication. And then I flip negative 3 over 9 to 9 over negative 3. Now that negative follows wherever the numerator goes, even if we have to flip. Now we just multiply. It's a regular multiplication problem. 6 times 9 gives me seven, or 54. 8 times negative 3 gives me negative 24, and I just need to simplify now. So I'm going to find my mix, my mix number by taking the division, get a whole number, take that whole number times my denominator and subtract that from my numerator. So my new numerator is 6, so I'm just negative 2 and 6 24 ths. Turning it into a mixed number doesn't always mean it's fully simplified, so I need to look at 6 and 24. I'm going to find the factors of 6 real quick and divide them each out by 24. 24 divided by 6 gives me, oh, I'll find both factors in fact. Get the whole list. The greatest common factor is 6. I'm going to divide both top and bottom by 6. I get negative 2 and 1 fourth. On your own, try the next problem. When whole numbers are involved, they act just like fractions, but we sometimes don't see them that way. So any whole number can be written as that number over 1. 3 can be written as 3 over 1. Now we just turned it into a regular multiplication. We turned something we didn't recognize into something we do. 3 times 4 gives me 12. 1 times 8 gives me 8. Now I'm going to go through and find some factors. 1 times 8 gives me 8. 2 times 4 gives me 8. Find the factors of 12. 12 divided by 1 gives me 12. 12 divided by 2 gives me 6. 12 divided by 3 gives me 4. I have all my factors. The biggest value in both lists is 4, so I'm going to divide top and bottom by 4. I get 3 over 2, which again isn't 
in improper fraction, so I need to turn it into a mixed number. I know that 2 goes into 3 one time with 1 left over. On your own, try 5 ninths divided by 3. Mixed numbers and improper fractions represent the same values, but look very different. Mixed numbers are great for communicating math, but improper fractions are better for calculating math. So before I move forward, whether I'm multiplying or dividing, I need to turn any and all improper fractions, or sorry, mixed numbers, into improper fractions. To do that, I multiply the denominator times the whole number and add that product to the numerator. So 4 times 2 gives me 8. 8 plus 3 is 11. The denominator of 4 remains the same. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 plus 1 gives me 3. My denominator of 2 stays the same. So I should get... 11 fourths times 3 halves. Now I treat it like any other multiplication problem. 3 times 3 gives me 33. 4 times 2 gives me 8. There are no factors that sh are shared between three or 33 and 8, so I need to turn it into a mixed number again. That's part of the simplifying process. So I'm going to use my calculator shortcut. 33 divided by 8, I have my whole number of 4. I'm going to take my denominator times that whole number and subtract it from my numerator. 33, mi or 33 minus 32 gives me 1, so I have 4, my whole number, 1, my the difference I got from multiplying the whole number times the denominator and subtracting it from the numerator, and then 8, my denominator always stays the same. Always check to see if you can simplify that, but 1 eighth is already in simplified form.